now on Today in New York. Striking back, Iran launching a volley of missiles at U.S. troops. All eyes on the White House to see what happens next. Also breaking right now in Iran, dozens dead after a passenger plane crashes just after takeoff. And then murder charges in the case of missing Connecticut mother Jennifer Dulos as the estranged husband of Jennifer Dulos and two others prepare to face a judge. Well, good morning, everybody. 6.30 a.m. on this Wednesday, the 8th of January. I'm Michael Gargiulo. I'm Darlene Rodriguez. Let's take a live look outside right now. If you're just waking up, it is 6.30, 33 degrees out at this hour. Well, look at that sky. Yeah. Lauren Scow is tracking all commuter alerts, but first, Storm Team 4's Maria La Rosa is here with today's forecast. Is that purple swatch in the middle <laughs> good or bad? I, I can't know. know. I don't know. I think it's a sliver of that sun coming right. up, right? So that's a good thing. Well, we have some clouds out there right now. We even have some snow showers well to our west for now, but this is something that will concern me for later on this afternoon. I'll show you that in just a second. In the meantime, it's just plain old cold, a little bit of a breeze, just enough of a chill, 33 in the city, 31 in White Plains and Islip, 31 in Long Branch. So the system that we were tracking yesterday is in and out in its wake, though. It's cooler and windy. The wind advisory posted for most of our area, minus uh, northern New Jersey and parts of the Hudson Valley, too, uh, starting at noontime through the afternoon for gusts that could be over 40 miles per hour. On top of that, just to a quick little burst of snow coming through and it could be a problem on the roads with reduced visibility. Otherwise, just windy and cold, 39 at 3 o'clock, 34, but that wind chill down into the 20s by 6 p.m. All right, let's get you out the door for this Wednesday morning commute. Lauren Scal is watching all of it for us. What's going on? A lot of orange and yellow. <laughs> yeah, it's getting a little colorful out there on the maps. More and more people uh, heading to work in school and the bigger trouble spots right now. Route 80 eastbound uh, out by exit 28 just after it. You have the left lane blocked with a crash there. Delays go back about four miles. It'll add an extra 20 minutes to your commute, so don't get stuck in that. Uh, then heading over to the George Washington Bridge, there was a disabled truck on the inbound upper level that cleared. Uh, there was a crash in the express lanes out by exit 71, which the Englewood exit, but delays have eased out from about 60 minutes to 35 minutes, although it's still pretty jammed up through here. So definitely leave yourself some extra time this morning if you're headed that way. Michael, back to you. Okay, Warren, thank you very much. Now to the attack on U.S. troops in Iraq. Iran firing more than a dozen surface-to-surface -surface ballistic missiles at air bases that house Americans. Jane Nurk's Tracy Strands following all these overnight developments from our newsroom. Tracy. Well, Michael, a lot to get into this morning. He's expected to speak within the next few hours. But in terms of casualty and damage after the attack, President Trump already took to Twitter to say, quote, so far, so good. Already this morning, however, Iran has called the attack between the two bases, quote, revenge. So what you're listening to is from an Iranian TV network appearing to be Iraqi people shouting and warning to others to watch out and get inside the moment missiles hit an air base. The U.S. military confirms Tehran fired more than one dozen ballistic surface-to-surface -surface missiles against at least two bases in Iraq housing U.S.-led coalition personnel. So far, no casualties or damage have been reported. Now, this is from hours ago, leading the chant of, quote, death to America. We heard from Iran's supreme leader. Ayatollah Khomeini said last night strikes were a, quote, slap on the face of the United States and went on to name Iran's enemies as, quote, the U.S., Israel, and what he called the arrogant system, which was a reference to the West. American people should have clear insights as to how this administration came to this decision. Sometimes you got to fight back, and by God, this is one of those times. Now, the White House says killing Soleimani stopped an imminent threat, but the administration hasn't provided any details or evidence. The missile attack came hours after the burial for Soleimani in his hometown, where he was regarded as a hero by Iranians for leading the Revolutionary Guard. The president continues to call him a dangerous man and defends the drone strike that claimed his life last Friday. Now, today, Congress is expected to get an update on the intelligence behind the airstrike airstrike that kills Soleimani, who the Trump administration says was days away from attacking U.S. troops. And Michael, right now, airspace is restricted to commercial flights over Iraq, Iran, and the Persian Gulf. All right, Tracy, thank you very much. And the Today Show has a team of reporters following all these overnight developments, including Chief Foreign Correspondent Richard Engel. Richard will be live from northern Iraq coming up at 7 a.m. More breaking news now from Iran. A passenger jet crash that killed everyone on board. 
You can see the burning wreckage in some farmland not far from Tehran's airport. 176 people were reported on that flight. The Ukrainian airliner had just taken off for Kyiv. That's when Iranian officials say the Boeing 737 suffered mechanical failure. We're told the flight recorders are in the hands of aviation investigators. Most of the passengers were Iranians. No Americans were on board. Now to those new developments in the case of a missing mother from Connecticut. In just a few hours, Jennifer Dulos's estranged husband, his former girlfriend, and his one-time attorney will all be arraigned on new charges in connection to the case. Today in New York's Catherine Craig's in Stanford with the new details in this case. Good morning, Kat. Good morning to you, Darlene, and all of that will happen here at the criminal courthouse. We also do expect the prosecutors will reveal some information, the evidence in new search warrants. Let's take a look at this video. Fotis Dulos being arrested at his home. This was yesterday. You see him with investigators there. He is now charged with capital murder and kidnapping. Jennifer Dulos disappeared last May after dropping off the couple's five children at school. In a new state warrant, investigators revealed DNA evidence, including including Jennifer Dulos's blood found in several places, including her garage and her SUV. Police believe Fotis Dulos rode a bicycle to his estranged wife's house, waited for her, and then attacked. Investigators believe he used zip ties to restrain her. Her body has not been found. Dulos's former girlfriend, Michelle Traconis, now faces a charge of conspiracy to commit murder. Dulos's former real estate attorney, Ken McWinney, faces the same charge. And let's hear now from the state police. Police.